Hey everybody. So um, I uh, one of my one of my friends Matt. He's been on the channel like every Warcry uh, battle report that we've done, or uh, like he's done some Frostgrave and stuff too. We got together and he was like, "Hey, do you want to play? Um, you want to play Warcry Friday?" I was like, "Yeah." He's like, "Did you finish your?" Um, Flesh Eater Quartz Warband, like, remember I got you that, uh, Aberrant, uh, Arch Regent for your birthday, and, uh, yeah, so I was like, I have not done them, I will do them by Friday, <laughs> so, so I tried to, I, uh, I, I banged out a, uh, a speed painting job for the whole Warband, um, basically I, um, I picked up like, I, I got one of the uh, Grimwatch um, uh, under, Underworlds, like the, um, oh, what are, what's it called? Just one of those little box sets, you know, with um, a few, like, ghouls and stuff. And, um, and then uh, I got, uh, I picked up two, like, Var Vargeist, I think is what they're called, off of eBay. And, uh, and then uh, Matt gave me an um, Aberrant Artrusion. So, uh, so that's like the only, that's all I want to run for Warcry. <laughs> so I'm just going to, all right, just painted those up and, um, it's not going to be like a, you know, competition quality, like display, whatever, you know, quality. Um, this is like speed painting to a very high tabletop standard, but they look really good. and. I, I want to come back to them and do stuff later because, uh, you know, I think they're a really cool warband. But anyways, yeah, let's, uh, let's do some painting. So first up, everybody is going to get a good Zenithal Prime. Um, I uh, gave everybody a coat of black and then worked my way up towards a neutral gray and uh, then worked my way all the way up to a, a white, but never actually shooting white out of the airbrush. Um, I'm just kind of working my way up to like a off-white, and, uh, and then um, I'm going to, for the very last part, um, I like to, to work my way up, you know, and, and have a gradual transition but for the very, very last part, then I actually do a, uh, a little dry brush of an off-white color. And uh, I like to use um, P3 Sickly Skin, and it's just a, it's an off-white color. Um, it, uh, it has a, kind of like an eggshell color, and then it has a, like a little tiny bit of green to it. And when I do that last little dry brush, I'm mostly focusing top down and uh, and then maybe picking up a little bit of like details like ridges and fabric or little muscles or whatever, but mostly just going top down and then working my way down the model. And then to make a base color, um, this is actually, this is going to be kind of like more of my shadow color. So uh, I tried to mix up a few colors to get a nice deep purple. I was using uh, Game Ink, Vallejo Game Ink, Violet, AK Interactive Violet Red, and uh, Game Air Imperial Blue. And just kind of mixing those together until I got a nice deep purple. But I was kind of hoping, like I wanted to use the game ink to kind of bump down the opacity a little bit. But then the game air has a nice flow to it. And then the, uh, the AK, they just have a nice deep purple color. So I was just trying to mix everything together to get the right color and the right kind of opacity and flow. But I'm just gonna spray this into the uh, shadows. Like I want to 
Um, I want this to be kind of like my darkest darks for the flesh tones. I want that deep purple to be the darkest dark flesh tone. So I'm really focusing this on the spots in my Xenothal Prime that are black. Because I don't want I don't want black flesh tones because it, it looks like a hole inside the model. I just want a deep dark purple where anywhere where I see black on the model I'm spraying a deep dark purple. And then when I do my color changes I will, I'll take the one color that I was using and then dump it back into my little mixing thing. And then I'll change the colors. I'll maybe even use a little bit of quick change in the airbrush to, uh, to clean out the airbrush. A little bit of my, my quick change, like cleaner, <laughs> airbrush thinner. Dump that out, put the lighter color in, mix in the lighter color, and then uh, do gradual transitions between those colors. So I'm gonna shoot this from above, and then this is gonna be kind of my transition color in between the uh, my lightest blue <laughs> uh, that I wanna use for my flesh tones, and then my deepest purple. So I'm just, I'm just mixing the two together to get that nice uh, transition color. And then this is going to be kind of the main color where I'm doing like the 45 degree uh, color from the Xenothal Prime, sort of glazing a color over the, uh, the 45 degree mid-tone gray. And then I'll keep working more of that spectral blue, my lightest blue highlights into that color. And, uh, but the, um, these are very, very thin layers. So there's gonna be a lot of kind of the Xenothal and then the other colors that are showing through. But, uh, but I'm spraying more top down now. I want to create my highest highlights with that color transitioning from the, the purple into the very light kind of dead flesh blue. But as I'm going on, I'm getting lighter and lighter with the color because the, the highlights, I really want them to be highlights and stand out. I want them to make things like uh, faces and uh, focal points just kind of stand out on the models. And then same thing with the airbrush that I did with the Zenithal Prime. Um, once I get up to my very highest highlights, I'm gonna start using the, uh, the spectral blue as a pure color, and then I'm gonna dry brush it. So just trying to pick up like folds in the skin, and um, but just putting in like my very, very lightest Kind of flesh tones and uh, I was going to uh, stop here and then have this just be the lightest color but I ended up going a little bit lighter later but that's further down the line so but the, for now these are my lightest flesh tones my highest highlights so just dry brushing to pick those up and now that I've got my flesh tones where I want them for the most part, I'm gonna start working on other things. Um, so yeah, since these guys are a bunch of cannibals and or vampire cannibals, there's gonna be lots of bones everywhere, skulls and stuff. Uh, so I started using some uh, contrast skeleton horde for these. And this is just gonna be kind of like that base layer for those colors um, so uh, but yeah I'm just using I'm using my airbrush layer to kind of keep those lights and darks in place and then I'm just gonna kind of glaze on some other colors to make it look more like bone so I'm definitely letting the airbrush do 
the heavy lifting for this paint job. And then to do uh, leather and then some fur and stuff like that, I kind of have a thing that I've like something that I've started doing that I really like. Uh, so I start out with um, Vallejo Model Air Dark Brown. And then I, I mixed in a little bit of this Burnt Umber wash too. And uh, that's just gonna take down the opacity a lot. But mainly I just wanna start getting some like brown uh, shadows in place for well, I'm gonna use it on a lot of things. I'm gonna use it to make wood, uh, to be kind of like the base color for wood. And then I'm gonna have it be the base color for uh, leather, uh, any, any kind of leather that's on the models and, uh, and even like beards and stuff like that. And I, uh, I put some on the, um, on the wings too, and like the leathery membrane parts of the wings of the uh, Vargeist. So this stuff is just going all over where I want some uh, brown shadows. But uh, you can see like if you're if you're a Citadel guy, <laughs> you might use contrast paint to do this. Um, but this is this is going to be doing like a very similar job because the um, the model air has a lot less opacity than like game color or uh, model color. So it's just gonna kind of be a filter and it's gonna glaze on some color, a very, very thin layer of color. Now I'm gonna kind of slop on, I'm just gonna throw on some flesh wash all over. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna use a, a big brush and so I just want to bring back some of those like skin folds and stuff and kind of uh, start developing the, the flesh tones a little bit more. They were just a little bit too smooth with the airbrush for me. So yeah, this is where I'm gonna go back in and start uh, to redevelop those flesh tones a little bit more. But yeah, the first step is just going to be to glaze on some of this uh, umber wash all over the place. Really dumping it on. So now I'm going to come back in and do some more dry brushing on the flesh tones uh, after I did the wash I'm back over it. So, um, but yeah, I'm just going to be focusing on areas where the, you know, highest highlights because like I want to catch, like think if you, where you would get sunburned the most if you were uh, bald and you wore um, bro tanks around everywhere you went. <laughs> so like ears, nose, top of the head, you know, uh, shoulders and uh, maybe some a little bit on the arms and stuff like that, but mostly just like the very highest highlights, like the, the tops of the models. But uh, I also want to pick up those leathery folds in between the wings. And uh, if you look at real bat wings, that's how they look too, because it, it's all skin in there. Like there's no real like blood vessels running through there, pumping a lot of blood or anything. And like these guys are undead, like they live off the blood of others. So yeah, I want the, everything to look, any, any pale flesh highlights, I want them to look very, uh, very pale. And next to, to do uh, metal, 
any kind of metal. I'm going to start with a coat of Game Ink Black. And again, you know, I'm, I'm letting the airbrush really do the heavy lifting, like developing those midtones and darks and highlights. Uh, the Game Ink is just going to act like a filter and it's going to put down those, uh, those shadows on um, anywhere that I want to be metal so that it has, because uh, uh, metal in the dark, like if you look at metal, reflective metallic metal in the dark, it looks black in the shadows and then it looks shiny and reflected in the highlights. So it, later on, I'm going to leave the, the really dark spots dark and then anywhere that's, that's a highlight that shows through, I'm going to make that shiny reflective metal. And uh, next, to keep developing the metallic metal, I'm going to put down a layer of uh, P3 cold steel and it's exactly like it sounds. It's a, uh, it's kind of like a dark oily steel color. And it's, um, I think it's, it's a really nice, like dark metallic metal. And uh, so I'm putting that down anywhere that is gonna be, this is gonna be kind of like my mid-tone uh, metal. Like I'm going to have some areas that are going to be bright, shiny, kind of reflective metal. And then this is going to be kind of like the mid-tone, kind of deep, uh, deep gray or, or deep, deep oily, oily steel kind of color for metal. And then for those very, very highest highlights, I'm going to use some uh, Vallejo Model Air Silver, and uh, you could use Vallejo Model Air or Vallejo, I'm sorry, Vallejo Model Air Silver or Vallejo Model Air Aluminum. To me, they're like kind of the same color, but um, I'm just gonna put put that on, and then I'm gonna feather it out because it is very intense. Uh, so what I'm doing is uh, two brush blending, and. Uh, so you, you take one, one brush and then you load it up with a little bit of paint and then you kind of soften it out. Like, um, and even, even this, the, these, these highlights are very stark, but I'm gonna um, kind of knock those down a little bit later with some weathering. So it's fine, but uh, use it very sparingly because it is one intense color and uh, it sort of needs to be put on uh, intending it to be like very, very shiny and bright. And to uh, weather those the metal and knock down the super high key highlights, I'm using Army Painter Strong Tone. And um, Army Painter, so I feel like a lot of their their paints dry pretty glossy, especially their like shaders. The uh, um, the there's something about the way that they're formulated; they dry very glossy. But you know, to weather metal, they look perfect. Um, it just looks like kind of like a shiny, like uh, dingy metal that's been left left out in the elements for a little while. It's like it, it makes the perfect uh, kind of like weathered, uh, uh, slightly rusty steel. Yeah. So next up to work on my leather, um, I'm going to be doing the same thing. I'm just going to be doing some very, very thin colors on top of my airbrush layer to, um, to keep developing those colors 
And uh, so I'm using P3 Gun Corpse Brown and P3 Barbaran Brown. And then the Gun Corpse is going to be more of a, a mid-tone. And uh, so I'm just going to leave my Deep Dark Shadows in place where I, I already did my airbrush and then I did my color glaze over that. And then now the, uh, the Gun Corpse Brown is just gonna kind of be like the mid-tones. So, you, you know, you'll notice that I'm not painting anywhere that's gonna be in the shadows because that's, if it's like, uh, like a black um, under his like skirt, you know, or whatever, or even if it's in like a slightly recessed area, then I'm just gonna leave that. Like I'm just letting the airbrush do that hard work. And then uh, I'm gonna use these other colors to create uh, highlights. So I've already got my shadows where I want them. So I'm just gonna use this to uh, develop my, uh, my highlights and get that leather looking like how I want it to. And then to do my super high key highlights with the uh, Bargram Brown, I'm actually trying to do some little hatches to make it look like uh, broken leather, like the, uh, or yeah, like uh, aged weathered leather. So yeah, I'm using like a very, very fine tip brush and then putting in, trying to put in at least some really tiny little hatch marks on there for the highest high key highlights. Next up, I wanted to do some uh, kind of a rough overbrush on all of the areas that had some overspray. So, um, yeah, I'm using some Vallejo uh, Pale Flash color, and um, it's not necessarily a stone color. It's it's pretty uh, pretty bright too, um, but I'm mostly just trying to cover up purple over spray because uh, I'm going to do something later with that stone but uh, still keeping my airbrush my um, my highlights and just leaving those shadows nice and dark so yeah this is mostly just kind of doing a rough cover-up of our purple overspray And I decided that that color was a little too bright and saturated. So I mixed in some model color neutral gray to darken it down. And um, I ended up putting that all around on the, um, <clears throat> on the bases. So yeah, just being pretty, pretty rough, doing a rough overbrush and uh, same thing though, but I just wanted to go a little darker for the bases since um, I, I want my models to stand out and uh, I want the bases to be nice and dark and all the high key highlights to be on the tops of the models on there like heads and ears and stuff like that. And uh, I wanted to do an oil wash. I wanted to do an oil wash on the stone and on the bases and stuff, but I didn't, uh, I, I wanted to do some other stuff with basing, so I didn't want to wait for it to dry. So I just dumped a ton of null oil all over the bases, um, just because I, I wanted them to dry faster. <laughs> Um, and then I didn't even end up doing the thing that I wanted to do with the bases. I'm, I'm planning on doing some like snow effects at some point, but uh, it's gonna have to wait. <laughs> so, so yeah, I'm just gonna dump null oil all over anything that's stone or on the, the bases, any of the gravel stuff that's on the bases. But um, it looks good. I, I, I like how they came out. So an oil wash would have been better, but, uh, but they look good.
and uh, I thought that they just didn't look pale enough. So I wanted to go in and do some super high key highlights with some uh, sickly skin. And I think that this might be the actual first time that I've ever used sickly skin to paint sickly skin. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it definitely looks cool on um, vampire uh, cannibal, flesh eater cannibals. But yeah, same thing, doing the, um, the two brush blending and really thin layers of paint. Um, you know, it's, it's funny, like when, when you watch like Dallas at P3 do, he does two brush blending. He sticks one brush in his mouth at all times. And then, so it's wet and then he paints with one and then takes it out and, and then feathers everything out with the other brush and then sticks it back in his mouth and you can hear it the whole time. But, but that's like, it's like what P3 paints were meant to do. Like they're just the best for two brush blending. And once the uh, Nolan oil was dry, then I went ahead and did a dry brush with Stonewall Gray. Um, this is just one of my favorite colors of all time. It's one of my favorite paints. Um, I think that I even, I thought I couldn't find it or something. And that's why I decided to mix up another color to, to paint stone with. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use this to uh, do more of a controlled, like, kind of edge highlight, dry brush, um, but yeah, more, more two brush blending. But the, uh, the no will probably soften it out a little bit. You know, if you, if you do a dry brush over something that's slightly wet, then it kind of, uh, smooths it out a little bit. You don't get quite as much of a chalky finish when you're doing it. So yeah, that's cool. And then time to use another one of my all time favorite paints, uh, Citadel Blood for the Blood God. Hands down the best blood paint. <laughs> um, this stuff is great. Uh, I don't get to use it as much as I as I would like so because these guys are vampires you know I just wanted to make their chins like dripping with gore and uh, this stuff is it's just it's perfect it looks like a it, it when it dries it looks like a like a wet fresh blood and then it kind of like pools a little bit um, but yeah it's like a, it's a great 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 color Awesome paint. And uh, I wanted to do more with the basing. I wanted to do an oil wash with it and then I wanted to let that dry and then I wanted to do snow effects um, and uh, do some like flocking kind of stuff. I just did they, I, I need them for a game. So <laughs> I'm gonna come back to them later. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paint the rims of these guys uh, black and I'm using P3 Thamar Black and it's, uh, it's just, a, it's a really great paint it's super opaque it has really good coverage it's nice and matte uh, so it's it's one of my it's my favorite black for doing black rims on bases if you don't like black bases then don't use it <laughs> all right yeah that's gonna be it so uh, so yeah I really like these guys and um, I feel like they're at like a, a high tabletop standard, but I think that I could keep going with them. Um, I, I might even do a part two video, like doing some snow effects or something. Um, 
doing more basing and stuff. But uh, but yeah, I want to play with them first. <laughs> so so yeah, if you uh, if you like the video, consider dropping a like or subscribing. And uh, yeah, I'm trying to kind of edit myself down a little bit more. It seems like 10, 20, 30 minutes tops is like you know good YouTube attention span. But uh, yeah. Um, thanks for watching and uh, take care of yourselves until the next time I see you.